Good Friday to you all. Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. Hope you all are doing well. More beautiful sunshine here in Arizona, soaking it in through these uh, panels. We did get some rain last night and you can kind of see, I'm wondering how I'm gonna clean these. You know, bring the hose out, maybe get a long scrubber and rinse them off. Uh, Danny may have to even take some snow off this while I'm gone and well, we'll just have to see what happens. Thanks for joining me guys. Hope you're looking forward to a good weekend. I will be uploading this video with some connected internet, whether here off grid or on the road. I stay connected. You should too. Check out the video description below for some good deals on unlimited high speed internet. We are done. Solar inverter. If you saw my Wednesday video today, I'm going to show you the rest of it. The batteries. Heck yeah, guys, I, uh, I, I'm pretty happy. I can, I can now say we're done with the solar off-grid stuff until I double this and put another one right there. Until we do that probably next spring. Uh, this is getting me by 3000 watts. And uh, today I'm gonna show you, it's been working since Wednesday, powering my RV and Babe the Blue Box completely, 100%, no problem. Let me show you the batteries inside. But yeah, if you missed my solar panel installation, I have a whole playlist, an off-grid playlist. You can go back and check that video out. I will link it in the at the end of the video, as well as you can you can find it in in my playlist on my channel. And then Wednesday we went over this Sun Gold Power all-in-one inverter charge controller, which I have an update. They have knocked off another two hundred dollars. I will relink this in the video description. Also, it is now. 1500 something so $500 off this unit right now and uh, man I just love this so much got some other things going on around the equipment uh we're still working on babe the blue box but we're gonna focus down here if you guys remember before I left for the winter last year I got these four 200 amp hour lithium batteries from Redodo and there's the side of it so you can see what it looks like they are the 12.8 volt 200 amp hour plus life po 4 lithium batteries so in this system we're running a 48 volt system this inverter charge controller is specific to a 48 volt system now they do have some other ones if you're trying to get a 24 volt system or even a 12 volt system but this is specific and that is why these batteries are wired in series so negative to positive, negative to positive, 12, 24, 36, 48 volt system here. So it's 10.30 in the morning. Um, the little green charge light goes on and off. Now we're only using one leg of the charge controller. There's two separate charge controllers in here and, and now it's off again, which means all of the power that we're generating outside with those solar panels is coming into this, bypassing the batteries completely because they're already fully charged and floating at 55.5 volts, 48 volt system. And they're going over here to this 50 amp breaker. This 50 amp breaker is powering my RV outside. Except outside, you'll see we have two plugs. We also have a GFCI 110 volt just for plugging in other appliances outside. But this is my RV plug, which is a 50 amp plug. My RV currently is a 30 amp RV. That's why we're using the pigtail adapter. There's my RV plug plugged into 30 amp. We can only draw up to 30 amps through the RV. But if I ever upgrade or have a friend here that has a 50 amp RV, they can tap into this and then utilize my 3000 watt array outside all day for unlimited power. You're not really gonna get 3000 watts, probably closer to 2600 watts, but you can pull straight from this because you don't need batteries with that system. However, while we're talking about those batteries today, uh, I, I had mentioned on Wednesday that you don't need them. But what are you gonna do at night? When the sun goes down and you're not getting solar, you're gonna have to invert the power from batteries. Now my RV has uh, five Battleborn lithium 100 amp hour batteries. So 500 amp hours in the RV. And then inside Babe the Blue Box, we've got, well, I would say 800 amp hours, but because you're running it in a 48 volt system, you don't really have 800 amp hours. You have 200 amp hours at 48 volts, which it kind of still means the same thing, but just understand that I, that I, that I realize that, uh, 
And again, we're gonna do a full tour of Bay of the Blue Box probably uh, next week. I'm still organizing a few things in here and everything back there needs to get changed over. But these batteries right here are powering at night. The stuff that's in here, like for the security system and my lights and my other fridge and freezer and the rest. So what I've been doing since it's unlimited out there is at night before the sun go goes down, I come over here and I flip this 50 amp breaker off at night. In the morning, after I make a cup of coffee, come out here, unlock everything, I turn it back on. Might as well, because again, we're getting all this unlimited solar on the 3000 watts, where I've only got 1280 watts on the roof of the RV and they are flat. Not gonna get a whole lot done, but these are, these are liking all that sun, so. However, going back to the batteries, so it's kind of hard to see right there, but we're asking for 120 volt through the 50 amp right there. And what we are doing right now is running the air conditioner in the RV completely off of the solar panels that are outside. But then tonight, this whole Babe the Blue Box system will turn off the AC inverter because I will have popped off the 50 amp plug. We will also not have the charge light lit, which is blinking right there. And whatever this wants for power to power lights and security and cameras, will be pulling off these batteries right here. Also, I want to let you know that Redodo, since uh, last fall, has also now marked down their Redodo 200 amp hour, 12 volt lithium batteries. I want to say they're right around $650 a piece for 200 amp hours. Compare that to a company like Battleborn, 100 amp hours for $1,000 or 200 amp hours for 650. So those Redodos uh, are doing very, very well. Once I leave this winter, uh, we're gonna have to see what happens because they will not charge if it's freezing, if the batteries themselves are freezing, which is different. It can freeze inside here, but it, once the internal battery temperature reaches 32 degrees or lower, they will not charge, even if I'm getting plenty of solar over there. So something that we have to think about. I've still got some time thinking about possibly building a box around the batteries and putting in a little 200 watt here that will kick on to keep it above freezing in there. But um, we'll see how that goes. But right now, I can't stress how excited and happy I am to have my RV plugged in to this whopping off-grid system. And like I said, I'm running my rooftop air conditioner, guys, the stock rooftop air conditioner that's not very efficient. It probably pulls 1400 watts. It's not super hot today here in, in October at 7,000 feet, but still it's kicking on and kicking off and it's not, it's not even changing what's going on over in Babe the, the Blue Box. I can fire up the microwave. It's just, it's kind of like my RV is at a full hookup campground right now. And that's, that's really exciting with everything. You know, the water I pump into my RV manually through this 550 gallon container with a pump and a hose. If we go over here, my RV is also connected to sewer septic here on my property. One of three septic lines that goes out to my septic that I had installed here on the property. So I just leave that there, but I leave the valves closed. And pretty much once a week, I pull the black and then I pull the gray and then close them back up. We've got the 120 gallon propane tank plumbed in to the RV as well. And last is power. Again, my 30 amp plug is plugged into Babe the Blue Box. So as far as this RV is concerned, we're at an RV park with full hookups and unlimited. It doesn't know that we're really just off grid. It doesn't matter. It's kind of a cool way to live off grid, knowing that all that's taken care of. But then again, I got a completely backup system in here as far as power and a propane tank for that matter. But some people had made comments when I first came back at the spring and dropped $8,500 on a septic system here on my one acre and said, well, why would you start with that? Well, <laughs> to me, it was the most important thing because otherwise I got to fire this thing up and drive 13 miles into Sholo to the Maverick to dump my tanks once a week. Why would I want to do that? <laughs> you can always find water to haul in and you can always have solar panels for power, but having a place to dump your poop and pee was the first thing that I wanted to get done. And I realized that I did that in a different order than you may have done or that other off-graders have had done it. But um, 
I stand by my decisions and I think they were the right decisions and I'm happy where I'm at right now. So with that said, the RV can be pulled out of here in less than one hour. I gotta disconnect the propane, hook up my normal tank, put some things away. Actually, probably less than an hour I could leave if I wanted to in the RV, which uh, we're getting close, not this month, but next month, probably going somewhere else. Yeah, being off grid is uh, really exciting, guys. This is this is like a new chapter in my life. It's nice to have this spot to come back to in case things get crazy as I not bringing up politics or anything, but as I personally stay up to date on what's going on over in Israel and Palestine, and as well as the ongoing struggles with U Ukraine, uh, here in Sholo, our gas prices have popped back up 35 cents a gallon overnight. And um, we as Americans, we're, we're targets right now, uh, which is kind of scary. And uh, it, it makes me feel a little uneasy, uh, at, at least about going out and traveling and going to more places, you know, like... Anyways, what I'm saying is I'm glad that I have this piece of property to come back to in case things get really ugly here in the next week or two to come. I'm a little worried. However, I'm not, I'm not going to let it get in the way. I've got more projects I want to do here, and I'm shooting for mid-November, getting back on the road. In the meantime, I am keeping a close eye on current events, and uh, you should be too, especially if you're in this country, because uh, things are we're, we're in a very uneasy place right now. But I will say that my videos for Off Grid are doing really well lately on YouTube. And uh, I'm, I'm really happy about that because uh, when I used to go back to that house I had in Illinois or the shop that I had in Illinois, my views just tanked. Um, however, I think I have more subscribers interested in my Off Grid stuff than my travel videos these days, you know? As to all the haters and keyboard warriors out there, I keep getting a bunch of stuff. Eric, you're not really off grid. You've got power now. You've got a big projector screen. You know, you got a pool and a hot tub out there. That's not off grid, Eric. It's funny how people just come up with their own definitions of things just to hate on me and tell me that I'm wrong. Let's uh, Google off grid definition together. What does it say? not using or depending on public utilities, especially the supply of electricity. That's it. That's the whole definition of off-gridding, which I 100% am doing. So again, I don't like to argue with people, but it's, it's funny how so many people try to correct me all the time. And it's like, nope, nice try. No cookie for you. Um, my neighbor's moving. My my closest neighbor here, uh, well, their their property's for sale. Um, <laughs> they're asking a ridiculous amount, a laughable amount. Uh, I I don't think they will ever sell it. I'm not sure if they're moving out anyway and going somewhere else, but um, it's going to be a lot a lot quieter out here. <laughs> In the meantime. Uh, I may be trying to buy out more property right next to me or behind me or something. I'm, uh, I'm working on it, guys. It's getting tired of friends and deliveries uh, driving over my culverts. So I'll, I painted two of my old smart car tires, the old 13 inch tires, spray painted them neon green and uh, put them over the culvert. And uh, yeah, I got them on both sides of the driveway here uh, later today supposed to supposed to have somebody come out here and uh measure driveway gate fence all that good stuff get all their measurements get the supplies get back to me with with a quote and stuff after watching camper van kevin spend days and days digging down for those posts uh i think i'm gonna i think i'm gonna hire somebody before I even break a sweat <laughs> you know like <laughs> One other thing I've been doing lately is letting Opie have a little treat and uh, come outside off leash. And uh, maybe that's one of the good things about having your own piece of land, your own piece of dirt, is that the smells to him stay the same, you know? He's, he's getting used to this as being our little getaway base camp home. 
a little home away from the RV. And he's, he's been doing very good. He stays close. He doesn't run off. But I also don't just let him walk around without me nearby. Look at that belly. Look at that belly. He's never sprinted off or taken off on me. Usually he will just kind of stay by my side and we'll walk over to the, the green astro turf over there. But he sure loves being outside getting dirty. <laughs> He's a good boy, Opie. Yeah, some says. Want to go walk around, Opie? Yeah, you want to go check things out? Where do you want to go? You walk me, okay? Oh, we're back to another flop. So, you know, it's cool. He can just kind of lounge out here and maybe as time goes on, he'll be more comfortable and he won't need a leash at all on, you know, maybe he'll just learn to stay close to the RV. I don't know if I would do that on the road where he's not used to things, but he's very used to our property, which makes me smile, makes me happy. <laughs> Is he a happy boy? Is him a happy boy? Where's your sister? Where's your sister? There's my big girl snuggle butt. She has been learning how to headbutt and she headbutts me like crazy. She's so strong. She's such a cuddler. Yeah. I love you too. Do you want to go outside sometimes? But you sprint. You do, you sprint. I'm not sure why exactly, but Tara will take off on me sometimes. She gets the zoomies like crazy. Now Opie gets the indoor zoomies, but he's never actually taken off on me outside where Tara, she's gone. I, I get worried. I get worried. So she's going to have a leash outside or we're going to get that catio built here. I'm probably going to build a catio before I build a chicken coop out here. Probably. Yeah. All right, guys. Got some weekend plans. Got some rides scheduled with some friends. Uh, I need to go over and check out uh, Steve and Dana and their property over there. want to see how they're doing. And, and uh, yeah, hope you guys have a good weekend. I will be back with you on Monday with some more big updates from, I almost called it, I've named camp, but you have to wait because we're going to christen it in. Bye, guys.